I want to show you that if you understand the tools of time value of money, you can take advantage of some of the calculator's functions to simplify your calculation. Now actually, if you have the calculator I have displayed here, the BA2 Plus Professional, it actually has a function called net future value. That is, it figures out what the future value of a stream of cash flows is. Now if you have the student edition, which looks like, let me see, uh, switch versions, this edition, it doesn't have that function. So you'll have to either do the problem longhand, or you can trick the calculator into doing it the way we want to do it. So there are ways to do it that make your, your, your um, calculations simpler. All right, let's look at an example. An example will be easier to see. So let's say, for example, we have five years. One, two, three, four, five. And we have the following cash flows. We have 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. And let's say the interest rate is equal to 10%. And we want to figure out what's the future value in year five. Well, the future value in year five is going to be equal to 500, right? This amount of money, because it's already in year five, plus 400 times 1.10, right? Because we have to move this one period, plus 300 times 1.10 squared, right? Because we have to move this two periods to bring it out to year five, plus 200 times 1.10 cubed, right? Because this has to go three periods, and then plus 100 times 1.10 to the fourth power, because this has to go five periods. All right, that's, that's a little tedious. You can do it. You can do it on the spreadsheet. We've done an example of that. But let's take a look at how you can do this on the calculator. First, I'm going to show you the net future value function. And then I'm going to show you how, if you have the student version, you don't have net future value, you can still figure it out. So let's go to the cash flow function. This is a good one to use. All right, there's nothing in year zero, so we can just leave it at year zero. So we scroll down. The first cash flow is 100, and so we hit enter, we scroll down, uh, frequency is 1, so that's fine. The second cash flow is 200, enter, and again, frequency is 1. And then the third cash flow is 300, enter, and then fourth cash flow is 400, enter, and then the last cash flow is 500 and enter. So we can hit the NPV function. It asks us for an interest rate. We say the interest rate is 10%, enter. We go down, let's go down one more, NFV, net future value, and let's hit compute, and we get the future value is equal to $1,715.50. Okay, so that was pretty convenient using the, rather than having to calculate each one of these and then add them all up. Well, what if you have a calculator that doesn't do that, doesn't have a net future value function? Well, I've already put the numbers in, so we'll just use those same numbers. Let's go to the NPV function. Let's calculate NPV. Okay, NPV, okay, or present value is equal to so the present value in year zero is equal to $1,065.26. Okay, well, what have you done here? If we draw a time cash flow diagram, let me draw that out here. What do we have here? We have a cash flow in year one, we have one in year two. I drew them all the same height, and they're not. Three, four, and five. All right, what have we essentially done? 
we've taken all of these cash flows and brought them back to year zero. All right, this is 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500. So we brought everything back. That's what this number is. So we know what the present value is, but we don't want the present value. We don't want to know what it is here. We don't want to know that it's 1,065 and 26 cents. We want to know what it is in year five. So how can we do that? Well, now we know the present value. We can find the future value in year five by taking this one point, I'm sorry, 1065.26 and multiplying it by, I didn't need those parentheses, sorry, by 1.10 to the fifth power. Let's see if that works. Okay? So I'll just clear all of this. You could have just saved that. But 1.1, and we'll raise it, that y to the x key, we'll raise it to the fifth power, and we'll multiply it by 1065.26, and hopefully we get the same answer we had before, which was 17, 15, and 61 cents. So you can take advantage of that cash flow function cash flow worksheet, bring it all back to the present, and then bring it out to the future, that's a little less, that's less calculations in calculating each one of these and adding them up. The more, you know, calculations you have to do, the more chance there is that you'll punch something in incorrectly and make a mistake. So you can take advantage of the fact that you didn't splurge for the somewhat more expensive calculator, but still do the same calculation. And you can do that by understanding the concept of time value of money.